Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today, today we are handling legends. Absolute legends. So, you know, take a moment of silence, pause the video, cross your heart. We, we are about to enter holy territory. By which I mean, we're taking a look at some buck knives, specifically buck 110s. This is a knife that I've never talked about on the channel, but the Buck 110 is kind of the knife. It is a knife that kind of, uh, in a lot of ways, I think it kind of launched the knife enthusiast world. You know, when it came out back in the 60s, it was kind of the knife to have. It revolutionized folding knives, I think. Um, you know, you ask anyone on the street to, you know, describe a pocket knife. They will probably, even if they're not a knife person, they'll probably tell you something like the Buck 110. Uh, th th they're everywhere. They've appeared in pop culture, movies, and books, and things. It's it, it's a knife that has definitely made its mark, not just on the knife community, but on the world as a whole. And that's a bold statement. I know. I know. That's, that's really bold. But, you know... Here it is. It it happened. It's a legend. Many people still carry them to this day. So in this video, I want to compare an old buck versus kind of a newer buck. So this here is the Buck 110 Slim Pro. This was loaned into the channel, and I'm so glad that this was loaned in because this I, I really... I need an excuse to make this video. I need an excuse to talk about the Buck 110. And so when Reggie, my friend that loaned this in, sent this over, I was like, yeah, okay, we're going to, we're going to do this. So this is a very modern buck. This knife is a very old Buck 110. So after this knife was loaned in, I actually called up my dad and I was like, hey, you've got a buck 110, right? <laughs> yeah? And I said, can I borrow that? And so here it is. This is my dad's old buck 110. This was given to him when he was a teenager in the early 80s. And um, yeah. You can definitely tell that it has been carried and loved. And my dad can't remember if he got this for Christmas or if he got it before they went deer hunting, but it was a gift from his dad. This definitely had, it's definitely been sharpened. Focus in on their camera. It's definitely been sharpened a few times. <laughs> And uh, yeah, really, really is just kind of a um, a chunk of history, family history and knife history in general. So I'm really, really excited to kind of compare and contrast these two knives. Look at what they've got in common. Look at what's different. And yeah, let's get into this. I'm not sure exactly where to start. Should we start with the similarities? Or should we start with the differences? Hmm. Let's go ahead and start with the similarities. So, these knives are about the same length. There you go. So definitely full-size knives on, you know, leaning towards the larger end of the spectrum. Almost nine inches. So yeah, definitely full size knives. Blade length on the original. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll measure all the way to back here. Almost four inches. Let's just measure the sharpened edge. 3.75 or something. It's like the tip's missing off this one a little bit. Let's measure a sharpened edge on this one. Eh, about the same. So, very similar in length. 
Next thing, the handle profiles are very similar. Have kind of this arc here and then a straight back. Very comfortable. Very, very comfortable. Very neutral grip. And that's a good thing. You can get a really, really solid purchase on these knives without them, you know, being aggressively textured or grooved or anything. So that's nice. The lock is the same. You have the tail lock here. The back lock at the back of the knife. Not only is it on the back, is in the spine. It's also at the back, like the butt. Or the tail, you know, because, you know, there's a reason they call it a tail lock. Man, I'm just as intelligent as a bowl of beans, aren't I? Anyways, moving on. Um, they are both fully ambidextrous. Reversible pocket clip on this one and then no pocket clip on this knife, but you can open it with either hand. So that's good. They both have pinned construction. Not so good. <laughs> and they both do not have sharpening choils. As a kind of standard for buck. But this knife here definitely does carry the spirit of the original buck knife into a much more modern and EDC friendly package. And with that, let's go ahead and start talking about the differences. The first difference right away is the weight. This knife weighs about a billion pounds, uh, the weight of a star, and this one is a feather light. Um, of course, you know, when I borrowed this from my dad, I let him handle this one, and he was very impressed. He picked this up and he said, oh, wow. He said, that is nice. He says, that's lightweight. He says, I like this better than the old one. And, uh, of course, I had a bunch of other knives that I was, you know, had in for review at the time. And so I was showing him, you know, some of the stuff I was working with, some of the stuff I was EDCing and stuff. And, you know, among them were things like <laughs> the button lock Feldspar and oh, some other stuff. And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 that, that, that's all cool. But um, I like this. He says, I, th this one's the best. Maybe that's just me being an old fogey, but this one, this one's the best. And, uh, you know, I think that really does kind of illustrate what I was saying about this knife having the same spirit as this one, but in a much more modern and easy to carry package. As we have easy to carry, the new model has a pocket clip that is reversible, which is cool. Uh, whereas the old one comes with this admittedly very nice leather sheath. So that's, that's cool. Oh, something they both have in common. They are both made in the USA. Yeah, they, they, they are both made in the USA. So that's, that's good right there. Next thing that's not common is uh, the opening. As you can see here, thumb stud on the newer buck, and on this one, a nail nick, or just grab it with your hand and pull it open. Um, this brings us to another difference, is the blade shape. They're both clip points, however, the original is much more of a kind of buoy style, more of a trailing point clip point, whereas the newer one is a more straight clip point. I do prefer the blade shape on this newer one. Very, very useful uh, clip point blade shape. Really, really good. Um, oh, both of them have hollow grinds. There's another similarity. Wow, I keep finding similarities. <laughs> both of them have hollow grinds. However, the blade steels are different. On this one, we have the Boss Heat Treated S30V. As you can see right there, this has been a great, great knife to test. I mean, this. if you're seeing this video, it means the review of this knife is probably the next video that's going to post. So I'll save, I'll save my thoughts and, and stuff until you see that video, but uh, I have been enjoying testing this. So S30V on this knife, really, really great uh, blade steel. And on this one, we have Buck's famous 420HC. And yes, as you can tell, it has been sharpened often by my dad. The tip's a little bit gone. You know what? My dad says he hasn't used this knife in, in years, but let's see. Shall I see how good of a job he did sharpening it last time? You know what? A little bit rough, but hey, that's still a very good usable edge. So awesome. Um, but yeah, so different different blades. Next thing, the handles are different. On the newer one, we have just this. It, it's just my Carta. It is just my Carta around the back spring and a little back spacer. And that's what makes it so light. This knife, we have brass. 
big old chunks of brass with, I believe it's ebony wood. And um, yeah, definitely a chunk. This knife is very hand filling and stuff. Well, this knife is very comfortable, but less, less hand filling at the same time. So there is definitely that. The action on this newer one is much smoother. I will say right away, a lot smoother. I still can't really flick this knife out, but um, the slow roll is very satisfying and the close is very smooth. And this knife is a lot more uh, power, but locked up solid. I mean, you know, this, this knife is <laughs> many years old and uh, still, still kicking. Which I think is really, really awesome. But, it's about all the similarities and differences between these two knives. The thing that really impresses me is that this modern knife still carries so much of the character of this knife. Now, this knife is absolutely a classic, and no one can take that away from it. It is absolutely beautiful. But, I'm not sure it really fits into today's modern EDC community, or today's modern knife world. And, I know, it's a horrible thing to say, but, hear me out. You know, and I think, I think the point that this, that the... the Pocket knives have evolved past the Buck 110 as perfectly illustrated in the Buck 110 Slim Pro. This is still an excellent knife. However, you know, and it'll get your job done. However, for this weight, for the fact you have to carry it on your belt, you might as well get a fixed blade. This knife, as I said, I've been using it at work. I've been using it on the ranch, in the mountains, things like that. And it's been absolutely wonderful absolutely wonderful and it's been reminding me that really pocket knives nowadays have a lot of features that we just don't need they're nice you know they're fancy they make us feel good but as far as just use goes just plain honest down-to-earth use this is really all the knife you will ever well this is all the pocket knife you will need because obviously I would not consider this to be a, a, a hard use knife, but definitely a dirty use knife. You guys know how I am. You know, I, I definitely like hard use folders and that, that brings me to something else. You know, I, I'm a big fan of the Formax Scout and that knife is huge and it's heavy, but it's much more manageable than this little brick. And, uh, you know, it can handle tasks that this knife probably can't. So if I'm going to carry a knife for hard use, it's probably going to be that. But as far as regular to dirty use goes, uh, well, EDC to dirty use and hard cutting, we're not talking chopping or anything. This is all the pocket knife you really need. You know, you have your flipper and your bearings and your button lock and whatever. That stuff is all really cool. But this is really all you need. This design is tried and true. And you can see, you know, this knife is amazing. It's fantastic. It is. And when it came out, it was definitely top of the line. And this newer iteration is really exactly just this knife slimmed down. It really is just a newer iteration of an already great design. And to me... That speaks volumes about what Buck accomplished with this knife. They created a lasting legacy. They created something that will never not be useful. Now, in today's world where people are, you know, not, how do I say this? Not doing the things that people used to do, <laughs> this knife just doesn't really fit. This knife doesn't fit on really the belt of anyone working in an office. It doesn't really work for, heck, even people like me who are hunters, 
who work outdoors and stuff, there are options out there nowadays that are just better, that are more efficient. But that doesn't take away from the legacy of this knife at all, because this is a knife that I could hand to anyone. Whether you work in an office or in the woods, man or woman, child or adult, this is a knife that you could use and love, and it would serve you for a long time to come. I will say, however, I would if I was going to be dumped out in the woods out of a helicopter and someone told me you can only have one folding knife to survive out there, choose between the Buck 110 and... <laughs> I don't know, this is the first knife I picked up. This knife, I'm taking the Buck 110. I, I just am, you know? Heck, I, I might even, in that situation, I might even choose the Buck 110 over the bug out. In fact, I think I probably would. The point I'm trying to make is that this is just a fantastic design. And making it modern has only made it better. And, I mean, this knife isn't even all that modern. They bumped up the steel. But, I mean, really, you know, and added a pocket clip and thumb studs. Those are all modern features. But it's still a tail lock. It's still got, you know, a simple blade, simple construction, easy manipulation. Yeah. Just an outstanding, outstanding design all the way around. Can't wait till you guys see the review of this. I think it's going to be interesting. But there we go. There we have a quick comparison of the Buck 110 and the Buck 110 Slim Pro. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a like. If you didn't, leave it a dislike. Don't forget to comment below and subscribe. I've been Gideon. Ah, oh, come on. Ooh, I almost cut my thumb off there. Uh, I've been Gideon. And I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye now.